Valentine's Day is coming up. Now, I had an interesting, uh, I was with uh, my good friend Gwen Priestley when we were, I think we went to the TV One thing, but we were doing some other stuff, and we both realized, like, oh, who's going to be our Valentine? So we, we bet ourselves that we would each have a Valentine's Day date. So um, it is now the 6th of February, so I have less than, uh, I have eight days to, what, five days? Well, six to seven, four to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I got eight days. <laughs> I have eight days to uh, to find me a Valentine. You guys out there have Valentines? And what is the purpose of Valentine's Day? For me, I say it's a made-up holiday for Hallmark and all these people to give out flowers and cards and candy and all this stuff. I feel that, you know, it should be Valentine's Day every day. You should tell your loved ones you love them every day. It shouldn't be just one particular day where you get some crotchless underwear and some chocolate and you put on a teddy. You should be doing that every day for your man or your woman. Dice for whoever, whatever you choose to do and however you choose to do it. But Valentine's Day should be all day, every day. So if you want to be my Valentine, give me a call, 347-637-3016. That number again is 347-637-3016. Last night was the 47th, Avenue, 47th Annual Image Awards, and we'll see who won. And um, it aired live last night, so we'll be going throughout today's episode and talking about the winners and seeing if some of the predictions that I wrote down a couple of weeks ago when I went to the press conference to see if those, those predictions come true. Now, when it comes to the Image Awards right now and the, and the Oscar Whiteout, I find it kind of amazing that if you looked at the previous Image Awards, and I say go back 10 years, and you can find these Image Awards on imageaward.com, or you can go into YouTube, and then you'll see in the audience where a lot of you know our shows, from the Image Awards to the BET Awards, a lot of these honors which these shows have put together for us, by us, we don't attend. Now, I didn't go to the Image Awards last night because I was preparing for the show and, and I really didn't feel like going all the way out to Pasadena. But I'm interested to see how many people actually showed up because everyone's talking about, oh, let's boycott the Oscars, boycott the Oscars. But they don't go to the Image Awards, they don't go to these shows, so I'm very interested to see what the audience look like when it comes to these celebrities. Now, having the opportunity to work behind the scenes at the Image Awards, you know, I noticed in, from the beginning where, you know, certain celebrities that they would honor them just for them to show up because they knew that if they said that they were honoring them, they would show up. If they weren't going, you know, in, but if it was, a, you know, if it was the categories, if you look at the categories, a lot of us didn't show up to our award show. So I'm very interested and excited to see how it went down last night. If anybody saw the Image Awards, give us a call, throw it up in my Facebook, put it on Twitter, hit me on Twitter, hashtag uh, Image Awards, what I saw. And um, let's see if we stepped up to the plate. Because to ask everyone to boycott the Oscars, that would mean every, if we want to make a stand to, to for we want equal roles and we want equal uh, amount of same amount of writers and across the board then if we're going to truly boycott then we need to truly boycott and not one african-american go but then what's the point of boycotting how are you going to tell what why would i boycott the oscars if if all of us weren't doing it in unity and what is the unity not because we weren't nominated but because of the lack of diversity when it comes to roles they're not making movies for us, about us. And if you look at a lot of the TV shows that are coming up now, they're taking old TV shows and old movies and making them television shows. Like they, they would, that, that, you know, that sucked back then. So why would you make them TV shows now? So boycotting the Oscars to be as, um, and I'm not a SAG member, um, but it doesn't, it's boycotting the Oscars. I don't see where it's going to make such a big difference because it's going to, this is years of, systematically making sure that we are not put in the system or the roles are not written for us. They're not writing the, um, the, the movies where it's like Leonardo DiCaprio relevant. They're not writing roles like that for us. Now, Stacey Dash says, you know, she doesn't have a problem with the gentleman playing Michael Jackson, the, the white gentleman playing Michael Jackson, because it should be a role. Anybody should have the role. It shouldn't be based on color. But when you're playing an African-American person, then you would think those roles would go to African Americans. Now, at the time, Michael Jackson, the life, the, the point in time that they're doing this story on Michael Jackson, it's once he has gone through his vitiligo and his all of his skin is a completely different color. But could a fairer skin African American play this role 
better than the gentleman who got it. Um, Rich Sister, what you got to say, what you got to say? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, yeah. Uh, when you talk about the boycotting, because I did, well, I ended up doing my show yesterday, and it's titled, How Effective is Boycotting Today? And the problem is, uh, when you look back at the boycott, like dating back from the Civil Rights Movement, I mean, they had a purpose, and they understood that they all had to come together as one. You know, when you're boycotting, can't just be thinking about yourself. It's really being able to, you know, not think of yourself, but think of others. And you got to be able to withstand the test of time. However as long it takes you to get what you want. My issue today is, uh, what I said on the show yesterday, that people seem to be into what I term that comfort boycott. They'll go out there for a day and act like they're protesting, but, you know, when the reality show come on, they're ready to put down the protest sign. Mm-hmm. And you can't do that. And you're going to really boycott, then really be, be about a boycott. Yeah. And really be about it. And, and, and that's a straight interesting thing, because Ethan Hawke actually came out and said that we should boycott the Oscars. Now... Last year, Ethan Hawke was nominated for an Oscar. Would he be saying boycott the Oscars? Like, like does he get a black card because now he's joining in? And let's boycott the Oscars. And who said this? Say it again. Who Ethan said this? Ethan Hawke. Oh, well, <laughs> well, I don't know what to say about that. All I know is, you know. And the real problem, which you really need to look at, um, also what I said on yesterday's show, is we don't have nothing because we got too many of us sitting on what God has given us. Mm-hmm. See, there's plenty of black people that have production companies in them, but they're sitting on it. Mm-hmm. There's plenty of writers, there's plenty of directors sitting on their gifts. See, we need to take responsibility for that. What did God tell you to do? And are you doing it? See, a lot of people are sitting on their gifts. So we have to take some, some responsibility for that. Mm. Hey, that is we true. We don't that... have it out there because we're not stepping up and creating it. That is true. Like you said, there are people there, you know, there are people that have their own production companies and, and the people that actually, you know, that are sitting on their gifts. But then you have these individuals that have their production companies and they're doing movies, but when they go to the big studios wherever or don't have the budget, say, a relevant has to, to promote their movie, then you, you know, then and it doesn't do as well, and then maybe that's when they go, oh, well, you know, why, why am I trying if I'm not going to get the opportunity, if I'm not going to be put on the same playing field as these other movies because I don't have the studio budget money to promote my my thing just like they would have a relevant. Mm. Gotta keep knocking on the door. Exactly. Exactly. You can't. I mean, you can't be your skill. Mm. Keep keep trying. Keep doing it. Don't stop. Mm. But for some of you, get started. Yeah, you know? and and it's hard for and it's hard for some people to you know to to jumpstart their their careers or whatever they're doing because they don't know how to do it. And I'm telling you now, if I don't know how to do something, there's a video on YouTube that shows you, you know, the time that I've been off and just re- getting everything revamped for the new for the new year for the new show. I've been in classes. I've been learning how to do certain things with certain videos, and so that I can be better. So you not only have to, you know, you have to teach yourself because with this technology and how we are now with the internet and the phones and able to do this show and be, you know, 2,000 miles away and still be able to do what we're doing with the speed of technology, you have to teach yourself every day. You can't sit on not just your gifts, but you have, even with those gifts, you have to learn how to take those gifts and make them better. No. I mean, it's always a, a learning process, always. 
Exactly, and that's what people need oh, to. That, that's what people need to understand. That is definitely a learning process, and 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 not to get caught up, and not to not to feel because this particular thing doesn't happen, then um, I'm a failure. Or if it doesn't happen as fast as other people may think it's supposed to happen, then I'm a failure. You know, so you know you have to. You just have to, and not get outside of your own head, and and just believe, and just step out on faith. And a lot of, a lot of individuals don't have the tenacity or the guts to do so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, it's easy. I mean, it's not, but, I mean, it's got to be something else uh, just within you that's saying, that says, you know, this is all I have, this is all I want to do, so it's nothing else for me to do it but to um, do it. I mean, it's got to take that extra something inside of you that you're willing to uh, get started, first of all, and then just keep it going. I mean, that's something you really need to deep down, dig deep down inside of you for. You can't turn to nobody else for it. And this is true. This is true. Hey, it's about 11.15. We're going to take our first break with the new Cassandra Calloway Show on blogtalkradio.com. Got my girl, Miss Rich Sister, sitting in the cut. What I'm going to do while I've been gone, I've been doing interviews and a lot of things, so I'm going to let you hear some stuff that put, went down. Here is me, Tina Coleman, World AIDS Day. Hey. Hi, Tina. 